everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for your interest in what I have to share today. I'm doing a client session. I'm going to be sharing distance energy healing and psychic wisdom. The goals are short and sweet. We're going to be working with your higher self in order to do healing for your head specifically. So maybe that's the brain, maybe that's the third eye, maybe that's the mind. We'll put it in the hands of your higher self and see where this goes. But I want to thank you so much to the client for the opportunity to support you today. And thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can do so at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right. Okay. We are going to go just clear the air here. Experience your higher self. Do some healing for your head. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, the first thing I feel inspired to do is just simply welcome your higher self in. But my guides say, no, I'm going to go to you and to what we would define as your head. So I'm in the energy of that space. And now I'm welcoming your higher self here. There's some that this is so weird. Okay, you your arms are basically held up like this and they're shackled to a wall. Your head is full of a dense material. It kind of looks grainy and orange in color. Hmm. And I see like grease spots. They look like butter, like little spots of butter. And so they're just kind of around where the brain would be. There's, it's all compact in here, but it seems like there's more buttery grease. That's sort of like the eye level and then inward with some little grease spots here around in the brain. And then we have a, a lot more just stuffing, I guess you could say, <laughs> material. And you're shackled again. So I'm sort of looking at this and I ask your higher self, what does this mean? <sighs> your higher self represents a woman. She has an extremely small waist and she's wearing a very nice dress. She wears a red ribbon around the waist of a black dress and the dress, um, it comes out at the bottom. It's, it's got a lot of, uh, fabric. It's just sort of, uh, comfortably drags. She's very clean and put together. She has really pretty hair and there's curls in it and it's pulled back in the back and it's a dark brown color. She has really nice eyes and a very nice smile. And there's something between you and your connection with this aspect of your higher self. You um, represent being numb and incapable of sensing, seeing, feeling this higher self. Okay, I have a feeling we are literally barely skimming the surface of what this is all about. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of strange twists and turns here. And we need to open to the bigger picture of something more than just your head. Is it possible, like I hear there's something wrong with my head or it's all in my head. And... And it has to do with your decision making. That's what it feels like to me. But I'm open minded. I think it's worth it. Everybody gets like a brain healing. We all need healing for our brains. And so a physical head healing <laughs> and then a, the mind, right? But then more than that, self-love feels like self-love too. 
Okay, I'm gonna, I'm picking you up off the ground. You represent somebody who's naked <laughs> and um, you've been stuck with like darts of poison and you're kind of delirious and numb and you're trying very hard to walk and stand but you just crumple and you're very, you're not aware of anything that we see. You're not aware of your higher self here. You're not aware of anything. You're just like, like this, like the tree went timber. And I stand you up and I'm actually hoisting you up in front of your higher self. <laughs> You're like a big lug. <laughs> so I put you here <laughs> and I'm just doing this right now. And your higher self opens your eyes like this. this is, and then shines a light in there like a doctor would do. This is like seeing if the pupils open and close. It's like doing just a basic medical exam. You're passed out. You have no idea this is happening. You're not proud of yourself. Oh. I have some memories like these. Maybe, maybe you could say college memories like these. <laughs> you wake up the next day like, what, what is going on? Why do I remember doing this? Or why don't I remember anything? <laughs> like, and there could be some shame involved in this. It could be some laughter involved in this. But if you keep doing that repetitively for a long period of time, you're going to start asking yourself why you're not growing up. And it's almost like you're weighing yourself down, holding yourself back and completely numb to the person that you want to be. And now to face your higher self, it's going to ask you to do better than this. And it would be better to just be passed out and then have an excuse why you can't do better than this. This is what's in your head, okay? <laughs> this is in your head, literally. <laughs> I find this so interesting. Okay. Oh, so th there is pain. There's pain and there's enough pain that in a way you've built up a pain tolerance, therefore you've become numb. So then to exist without what has become the pain, um, it would start to activate feelings. Like actual feeling bright or feeling happy or feeling alive. But since you've endured so much pain, that would actually be not something you would want to feel because you're accustomed to feeling pain. That's all in your head, but this is real, okay? In your head, this is real. And because I see, okay, let's say, let's say, let's say there's a alcohol induced a party time, okay, for three straight months. And then, there is time where you're like, okay, I, I can't keep doing this. I, I am not doing this. So now there's like a month where there's no party time. And it's like, my God, I wake up feeling good. I feel happy. I feel energized. I feel productive. I feel all these things. But then it falls back into, you know what? I feel great. I'm going to go party and celebrate. And this turns into like a three month, like fun party time. Only to get to this point where it's like, what am I doing? And why am I doing this to myself? No, I got to just stop. And so now we have a month where it's like, oh my God, I feel great. But something about this, I feel great time. I feel so much better. I need, it, it's almost like this violates the party time. And when the party time is violated, you're misinterpreting things because your true happiness is when you are blitzed. Okay. Your true happiness is party time. Because in party time, it's almost like you can turn off the world. You can turn off your emotions. You can turn off reality. You can turn all that stuff off. And so are you really happy? Oh, you, you don't want me anymore? Party time? You don't want me anymore? I'm not good enough for you? It's a weird thing here. You've got a weird relationship thing you've got going on here. Because I keep seeing this is a good scenario. I keep seeing um, three months, 
having fun, get to a point, what am I doing myself like one month of recovery, feel great, I wanna keep doing this, I'll just go out, it's just one night, becomes three months of doing this. And the problem with this weird habit or weird behavior, this pattern that's developed, um, there is so much engagement in the fun party time because there's so many perks to it. Even if the, there is a lot of um, difficulty, there's a lot of uh, survival with it, it's almost like I can turn off reality anytime I want. Why is the joy then need to be punished? Hmm. Because we need to punish the joy and we need to just give in to the party time. How could you be genuinely happy? How could reality be that you're happy? No, reality isn't where you're happy. You're only happy when you're, you're living in the, the deluded fantasy of the party time. That's when you're actually happy. Didn't you know that you're actually happy when you're destroying yourself? But when you're not destroying yourself and you feel happy, no, that's a threat. That is a threat to um, the corruption, okay? The corruption needs you to stay corrupted so it can stay alive, okay? You're feeding its purpose. But then corruption gets insecure and vulnerable and it wants to attack everything that's easy and actually clean. This is actually easy. This is easy, this is yourself. Oh, I remember me, oh, I feel great. And then it says, no, 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 you don't want that. That's not, that's, that, that's boring or that's this uh, lie you're telling yourself or no, you need to just continue to drink up this poison, this toxic time. This is good for you. This is what you really want. This is, this is better. This is in your head. I'm literally walking into this. You don't want to face your higher self because your higher self is to face reality. And it's going to ask a big something of you. It's going to ask you to challenge yourself. Literally, it's going to ask you to challenge yourself. It's going to ask you to challenge yourself to not give in to the toxi toxicity. And you are... It's like a fear of failure. Well, I don't know if I can do it, so I can try, but then I'll probably fail again, so why even try? Or, yeah, I can try, but it's like I'm burnt out on trying. Uh, I'm just going to let you down. I don't even want to deal with it. I don't even want to face you about it. Hmm. Hmm. I ask your higher self, what do we do? I mean, I'm like holding you up like dead weight to your higher self. And it, it's your choice, right? It's your choice. Obviously, if you're wanting to work with your higher self to heal your head, then that's your choice. So you desperately want this. Somewhere in your subconscious is asking for this. It's saying, yes, I need help. I need healing for my head. It's whispering it, but it's loud and clear. That's how you could ask for this in a session. It's loud and clear. What do I make of this? Like, what do we do with this big old lug? Doesn't want to wake up. Doesn't want to. Doesn't doesn't want to wake up. This sound. This is gonna sound kind of disturbing. To me, it's kind of disturbing. I have lemon juice. I don't know why. I have a big old jug of pure lemon juice. <laughs> and I'm opening your mouth and I'm putting, you know, like when you do oil changes, like a siphon, I think. <laughs> pouring lemon juice down your, and pouring lemon juice in, okay? Go, 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 go. It's pumping you full of lemon juice right now. Is it possible that you are desperately need some vitamin C in your body? Lemon juice might mean vitamin C. Maybe you need more fruits. Maybe there's something about the magic of the lemon that would actually do you, your immune system some good. It would do your brain some good. It would do your body good. And thus, I, I have to question maybe that it could have some purpose like this. But it's also to wake you up. 
You're, tr you're, you're crying now. But your eyes are closed. And you're just crying. You're just trying to ignore, but the lemon is actually speaking to you like a spirit. I also see um, cleaning products with lemon in, in it. That lemon is a really good cleaning agent. And so I see that the lemon is cleaning you. I mean, it's a straight up gallon of lemon. Straight up like pure, fresh squeezed lemon, okay? Going on down the hatch. <laughs> You're just crying and your tears are really burny. I see there's someone on the inside of you. And that the lemon juice was for that person who was thirsty. Who needed healing. I see it's time to let go of the old and embrace the new. Didn't you know? And didn't you know that? That it's time to let go of the old now. It's time to embrace the new. It's time to embrace the new now. It's let, time to let go of the old and embrace the new. And nobody cares that, that the old happened to be a lug that was freaking full of a poison and, and leaning in the direction of a self-destructive habit. Um, we're okay with you. It's okay. And it's time to crack that shell. Like it's time to let it go, the old, and then embrace the new. You're... It's interesting because you're absorbing the lemon on the inside and actually is forming a body. Hmm. But you're kind of... I guess you're trying to decide what the new you is going to be all about. That's what it is. You know that what's cool about this is this is all in your head, but it this is a, this isn't like a figure of speech like yeah, you're seeing things all in your head. No, there's a real event taking place here. Whatever you've been fighting with, struggling with, if you could realize how easy it is to just let go, let that, all that old, just, you don't need it at all. Because it's simply delaying the opportunity for you to be introduced to the new you. And the new you is based upon, it's like a vision of how you always wanted you to be. And to be proud of yourself. And you can be proud of yourself. Your higher self is ridiculously patient. It's interesting as this woman, I'm trying to un understand, does she represent a mother? Does she represent a teacher? Does she represent, there's something hard to read about her expression. I want to call her like a Mary Poppins type figure because Mary Poppins is a bit mysterious, you know? She's very tidy and put together. She's very elegant as well. She's a beautiful woman and she's perceptive. Everything about Mary Poppins is wonderful. And she reminds me of a woman that's like Mary Poppins. You really should meet her. You really should meet her. It's safe for you to come out of the dark within yourself now. It's safe for you to come out now. It is. You're just a bit sheepish about... It's almost like you got tangled up in some bad decisions. You got tangled up in an old man's body. I don't know. I see in that lug, there's all these weird like vines and um, cables and it, and it, it just like, as it, it just kind of opens up, it's like there's corn on the cob and then you take that little, you take off that and then there's the corn, right? So it's like we're peeling off the, <laughs> the lug body and there you are on the inside. And it's like you were all kind of wound up in these like ropes and cables and things.
And so you're kind of embarrassed how wound up in that body you got. Because there's something familiar about the insecurities. So when you stand here in front of Mary Poppins, higher self, like you're dirty and gross and filthy. But I would rather describe it as you were just born because babies that are just born, they need to get cleaned up, right? There's all that afterbirth and everything. They were inside the body. So they're now exposed to the fresh air of the out, well, the hospital or wherever, but now they're, they're exposed to new elements, right? That they're kind of dirty. So I just see you as, you know, covered in the birth. And I don't want you to carry a feeling like you weren't born correctly or that you should, I don't know, be ashamed of yourself or anything. You did everything right. I feel like I need to say that you did everything right. And anybody could look and say, oh man, you definitely didn't do right things. Um, no, um, energetically, you, you have been following the path to a T. You have done everything right. Even when we're maybe wrapped up um, in the wrong direction or we get swallowed up in it, we're still doing everything right because we, we are um, digesting the lessons during that time that make us the most vulnerable. And so we could lose what is our classiest gleaming self, but no, we, we had to kind of go down that tunnel. We needed to go down in there so we could access those lessons. Now we might lose ourselves in those lessons, but we will find a way to be reborn again. And I feel that that's what's happening here. And it really is saying that when you're ready, decide, okay? When you're ready, decide that you're ready to be who you know that you are. You're ready to be who you know that you are. Because when you decide that and you know you don't need anything else, you're going to have to adhere to a, an expectation of yourself, a responsibility to yourself, and a responsibility to the life you want to live. But if you don't hold any responsibility to yourself for the life you want to live, you might as well just go down the slip and slide and see where it takes you. Or you can get a little bit more control by hold, holding yourself accountable. By being responsible. By saying, I am responsible. And I'm responsible for me. And I am the me that I, I've always wanted to be. I am that me. Because as you say that, then you aren't anything else. And you do want to bring all the feelings back to you. You want to feel again. And I, and I mean that when I say that, because even as this newborn standing here covered in all this weirdness before this very clean and put together higher self, it's like you're numb. You can't feel love. You can't feel how incredible this event is. You can't, um, there's a lack here of, of the vibrancy, okay? And it seems like it circulates around you as a problem or you as, and maybe there's something wrong with me. It's like, it's kind of circulating around that kind of energy. Um, so I'm going to actually take all that energy here and we'll just toss it aside because I really want you to feel, even for me to feel your higher self in this way, like I feel it through you. I'd really like to know more about your higher self, see what messages she wants to share with you. I don't know. She says like this. I'm not sure what that means. So, oh, I guess it just means for me to be quiet. <laughs> Is he telling me to shut up? <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna relax here. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Oh, oh, you want me to be quiet? <laughs> okay, I swear to God, I can do it. <laughs> um. <sighs> She's giggling. <laughs> She's a serious face again. It's time for you to make a decision here. I'm like kind of the announcer of sorts. <sighs> hmm. 
Hmm. Something associated with your emotional gut. And it seems like uh, it's got, I don't know, long arms. This is coming out your emotional gut. But it's stuck. Something is stuck in your emotions. She shifts her energy, your higher self shifts her energy, and she starts to sing like a bird. And somehow the singing is calling this something to not give up, and it keeps wiggling its way out. It's a squid looking thing. You wondered why it was in there. Everything is very um, unknown about it. Because everything that you emanate is like numbness. Even for me to try to translate, I'm touching it and I feel numb, numbness. But, but she calls with her hand, like literally she kind of moves her hand like this and, and calls for it. And it becomes a hat. And then she wears it on her head and she says, thank you. And I kind of looking like, uh, it's like moving. That hat is, it looks like a hat, but it is moving. She just smiles and just ignores my statement. And interestingly enough, we can be inside of, inside of, inside of. So you shed the big lug and there's a new a born version of you from the from the holy lemon juice <laughs> there you stand but still the numbness but i see that this body is merely a shell housing yet another one and it's made up of multiple birds the birds don't know how to sing and they don't know how to fly i start to see that squid that she turned into a hat isn't moving anymore and She's very strong in who she is. So your higher self is representing um, a divine feminine emana feminine emanation. <laughs> feminine emanation. <laughs> okay, we should make a song out of that. Okay, I'm thinking of Eminem too. Like I think Eminem should make a song out of the feminine emanation. <laughs> I want to hear that like spoken so fast. <laughs> okay. So, where was I again? <laughs> this is like feminine emanation. Okay, sorry, God, I can pay attention here. <sighs> yeah, that hat is solid. She's strong in who she is. And I admire her a great deal, actually. I want to try and knock her down. I just want to come out of left field and just try to knock her down. <laughs> just to be funny, like just to show her, yeah, you're not that strong. But no, she's very strong. Like, it's almost like she's ahead of the game. I couldn't come up with something. It's like, I'm going to secretly do this. She already, like, knew I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but she wouldn't have to know I was going to say that to it just wouldn't I wouldn't be able to knock her down kind of thing like she's really strong that's I, I just want to emphasize that your higher self is is representing this woman okay in this way it's, it's really nice to meet her is it possible that you wanted a, a female guide like one that you respected women and one a woman that you respected that you could look up to that was guiding you to be straight and narrow that was guiding you to be clean and put together a woman that was guiding you that something in your heart valued women and valued that kind of woman hmm 
You're just a little child. I don't know how to understand your, your appearance. It's almost like, um, like, like adorable little stuffed animal or something. Like a squishable stuffed animal, like a little buddy. You're like a little buddy. I like, I like you. <laughs> You want to like you too. And you're feeling more. I say just, just let yourself give in to reaching out for her hand. Acknowledge her presence here with you. Acknowledge her helping you. Acknowledge that you need help sometimes. There's your hand. Interestingly enough, uh, what is that s sort of squishable buddy is sort of absorbing into her hand and I see you as just like a naked baby officially, just standing with <laughs> a little baby legs. But you're not a baby at all, full grown person. Hmm. This is all about healing your head. Huh. She says that it's important that we build the feelings and the bond. It, if we're looking at your head, the feelings are not always in your head, but the feelings are to be in your head, apparently, like, we well, have to feel, you can't be numb, like, you're gonna have to feel, and, and feel the truth about yourself, and feel your connection with your higher self, there's a reason why you want to see your higher self as this uh, emanation of a woman in this way, because there's something that empowers you about it, there's something empowering you right now about it, and give in to it, let it help you, Something feels so much better, so much better. <sighs> it's almost like taking you off the hook for being perfect, but it's reminding you that it's, it's time. You have to hold yourself accountable to be the person you know you already are, that you have pride in who you are because you have control over who you are. Hmm. <sighs> I know we're looking at the head and the feelings, but I, I feel feelings in your emotional gut and I feel a movement that's kind of scratchy, to be honest itchy i don't know it's just the something around the neck and it's kind of coming on down okay so we just let it come on down because whatever got jammed up here we just let it come on down okay come on down come on down let it come on down come on down it's kind of like honey it's really slow moving but it is coming on down, thanks to gravity, slowly but surely. <laughs> it's kind of like this. <clears throat> Head is nice and warm, vibrationally. A lot of energy activity going on there. We no longer serve your purpose is coming on down. And we're just going to let it do that in its own, at its own pace and in its own time. But we welcome it to enter into the earth and just be complete in its process with you. And you can feel lighter now. 
more feelings activated, more sensory ability, more connected to your higher self, more self-love, a rebirth of yourself in your own head, <laughs> but in your being, really. It's all about in your being. All right. Have a very awesome day. Thank you very much for this. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Bye for now.